don't own zero Bitcoin. There's one Bitcoin and then there are copycats. How can you forbid someone from remembering 12 words? Our national debt is, is too high to maintain. You get punished for saving in the fiat world. How much do you have in Fort Knox? I bet it's empty. You combine two of my most favorite things. Like I never mentioned it on the podcast, but I am a passionate walker. Like I walk almost every day. Uh, if I don't walk, it's not a good day. Like I've started uh, my, start my mornings usually at like five, six, seven in the morning and start like a half an hour walk or an hour walk. And then sometimes even in the afternoon again uh, twice because I have a little dog and uh, he needs to, to get out. So I walk on an average, I think an hour a day. Like probably, I guess um, this is the time where I like have my earphones in like uh, listening and, and educate myself. Um, and Bitcoin, I mean, I talk every day on the podcast about Bitcoin. So this is, I think, uh, everybody knows why I'm passionate about Bitcoin now. Uh, like, what's, our, what's what my first question is, like, why did you start this? Like, wh how was the, what was the moment where you're like, okay, let's, let's start talking about Bitcoin and walking? Like, how did this whole idea begin? Mm. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the, the the reason I started that was because I wanted to get out get out of home and and um, go for a walk and um, um, I have to give you a little bit of context to my kind of personal situation. Basically, you know, we um, uh, after COVID we moved from London to to Scotland. Uh, we had our first son back in back in London. Then in Edinburgh we had our second child, uh, and uh, obviously you know we don't have much support from like extended family, no grandparents to help with the grandkids. So quite overwhelming, you know, raising two small boys. And um, what, uh, like three months in, you know, my partner and I were kind of looking after the the, the, the baby. And, at, you know, three months in, I said like, okay, it's probably the right time to maybe start taking it, like taking a little bit, you know, time off, like make it, it gets easier a little bit. Um, so I said, honey, you know, I, I need some, some me time, a little bit time for myself where I can, you know, just go and go for a walk, just clear my brain and, uh, you know, keep my thoughts and, uh, uh, do a little, a little walk, um, uh, nearby. So I would just go for a walk, you know, put on the headphones, uh, and listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks, uh, and, uh, go down the rabbit hole. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's the beginnings. Uh, and I got super, uh, like when I was walking and listening and absorbing all the, you know, all the contents, uh, and all the knowledge, um, uh, shared by, you know, the likes of Jeff Booth, Gigi and, and others, uh, I got super overwhelmed to the point where I said, look, you know, I, I know that there isn't much time I have, uh, I'm just have those two hours per week that I'm kind of, you know, between job and family that, that is for myself. So I want to squeeze the most of it. And I just said, I need to talk to someone about all those things because I'm going to go crazy if I don't. I think this is super important. I think I'm like, I I might be getting overexcited. Am I the only person like that? Like, are there other people who are also uh, getting this and seeing you know, the, what, how massively this will change the world? And um, yeah, you know, we set up, I, I set up um, a meetup page and uh uh, one guy came in, you know, then two guys came in and, you know, we started first, it was a bit kind of, you know, weird in a sense that we get together and yeah, it's a meetup, but it's, it's a walk. We're going for a walk and we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. Bitcoin, we know Bitcoin, like, you know, we, we understand Bitcoin. It's cool. It's really revolutionary. Why, why are we walking? Why don't we go to the toy pops? Like, well, I can't go to the pub. First of all, secondly, I really like walking and I really like, you know, Edinburgh, and uh, the Archer Hill, Archer's, Archer's Seat, uh, the hill <clears throat> not very far from here, which gives us, you know, a nice circular um, route uh, for about, you know, two hours walk. Um, so perfect to get to know each other, have a conversation, ask some questions, you know, and, and really, really spend the time in, in a meaningful way. Um, and that's how it started, you know, we, ever since, every Saturday um, for over two years now, we are, we're going on a walk in, in Edinburgh. Uh, and now also in other places, people started doing that. Uh, I love it. I think you already have like over 100 walks or something like that, you, you, yeah. you said. Uh, yeah, did, that's right. Did you get orange build, uh before that or like did you actually get Bitcoin while walking and hearing the podcast? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I got orange build during Bitcoin walks because in the beginning I was kind of, well, you know, blockchain and tokens and 
you know, all that and so cool, uh, so many things, shiny things and the new things and blah, blah, blah. But uh, pretty quickly. So actually, you know, the, <laughs> I have to admit the first the first two walks were called Crypto Walk. <laughs> and then and then basically I, I made my U-turn and say, OK, I get it now, you know, um, and, and from now on, it's, it's Bitcoin only. Uh, it's it's fascinating uh, how people are like Bitcoin only. How, how did this actually? How did you came to the conclusion? Okay, it's Bitcoin because for me also it started with Bitcoin. Then I went into other like Ethereum and some other really small shit coins. I don't even want to mention that I was in there. <laughs> uh, and and uh, then I came back to Bitcoin only. And then uh, I came. I think 2021 is the, the the year where I was completely Bitcoin only, like not even other assets or stuff like that. How did you came to the conclusion, okay, actually it is not a crypto walk, it's a Bitcoin walk. Why focus on, on Bitcoin only? Well, um, I, I have to probably give credit to my companions with whom, you know, we shared knowledge and we exchange ideas. And, uh, um, you know, I I had my kind of um, experiences in the space with, with during the, 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 uh, the DeFi summer, you know, when... Uh, People kind of started making crazy money um, using different protocols and stuff. So um, I was kind of still looking into this side and and uh, was sidetracked to to things that weren't uh, that were basically shit coins. Um, and um, at some point, you know, I started like uh, losing money, being wrecked on you know any any other other tokens uh, that that I had. Um, so, you know, my initial, uh, approach was that I thought, okay, I'm, I'm too late for Bitcoin. Uh, I, you know, maybe there is, you know, that there, maybe there are better, uh, pro better projects, you know, better chains, more innovative. Um, that, that was what I was thinking initially, uh, only to realize that actually now this is, you know, there's, there's one Bitcoin and then there are copycats, um, with you know, staking and uh, pre-mined coins with, you know, their foundations or departments or companies or uh, where somebody benefits from them directly. Uh, and that's what makes Bitcoin fundamentally different, that it's effectively, you know, open source, like Linux, um, open source software uh, run by anyone. Um, so in, in this sense, I got uh, very fascinated and... Uh, and I stepped away from 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 all the shit coinery that going around. I was very deeply in, you know involved in some 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 um, shit coin projects in the beginning. I was passionate and trying to push and be part of community. Now I'm kind of taking it easy as I like. Then that's that's irrelevant. Um, the only thing that matters is you know the future we're going to be living in, and in that future, um, Bitcoin is going to stay. Um, and uh, it just reminds me you now I'm because I'm I'm. Uh, I'm a maxi, but I still, um, you know, recently one, one friend uh, asked me to come and to to give a talk about Bitcoin halving on something called Scottish blockchain meetup. So there was like, a, you know, a block of presentations and people were presenting different projects, different tokens. And I was sitting there listening, you know, OK, fine, you know, and and basically he said, like, you know, if, if you're not going to come to talk about, you know, halving and Bitcoin, People are not gonna like. We're not gonna do anything. We're not gonna cover halving at all. So, you know, take it or leave it. And I said, do you know what? I, I really want to. Like, I think you know, people should know. Yeah, you know, we should get the our awareness out. And um, and yeah, you know, there was a guy who was running his like consulting agency, doing uh, you know, tokenomics architecture, whatever he wants to call that. Uh, and there were, you know, he did his presentation. I was kind of sitting there quietly looking at that. And, you know, at some point there is a question from, from, from the audience. So what is the average, um, uh, like shelf life of a, of a project, like how, of a token, how, how, on average, how long does a token last? And they say, well, you know, that depends. And they just start making crazy, crazy kind of discussion. And at this point, I go like, that, that's, that's just ridiculous. You know, that, that's, I, I know why I'm here. I know why, why I'm in Bitcoin. Um, and in the, you know, in my presentation, I say, well, look, this is, you know, the Bitcoin monetary supply and the distribution that will be released until the year 2140. So the life, you know, the, the shelf life of Bitcoin token is probably, <laughs> you know, uh, higher and longer than, than the other tokens. 
Uh, and I get, you know, people people get that. People got that uh, in the in the in the meetup. Uh, it was actually interesting because I had, you know, uh, very, very good feedback. Um, and it turns out that, you know, a, a shitcoiner event uh, turned out to be quite a good place to uh, to recruit Bitcoiners, to, to recruit people to come to Bitcoin Walk to, you know, ask questions. Uh, I, you know, I, it was it was funny because uh, on the Saturday, the twentieth of April, was that was like two days after the uh, that meetup, and I had two guys who came in from that from that from that meetup, um, the shitcoiner meetup, and uh, and got orange built on you know the first day of the new epoch. So I got like, yes, winning, you know, that's that's uh, that's an achievement. Yeah, I think uh, shitcoiner is just a bitcoiner who doesn't know it yet. So he's like, <laughs> no, no, to be orange spirit. Um, and the shelf life is also really interesting. I never looked at the shelf life of, of crypto tokens because I don't care. Like I know the shelf life of, of Bitcoin will be forever. So uh, like, I don't care about shelf lives. And also uh, I think it's valuable for Bitcoiners to be at those blockchain events. Like, first of all, you get the confirmation that everything we are talking is actually true. They are actually making up really weird excuses for their projects and they are having marketing. Uh, they are doing a good marketing job, honestly. Uh, I was at the recently, I think, uh, I don't know, it was middle of April, or beginning of April, there was a huge uh, blockchain uh, um, event uh, in Paris. And uh, short short story, like uh, like I went to Paris with my girlfriend. This was basically a, a trip there, uh, and I was also there. I was like, oh, let's 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 see, check it out. And because I have a YouTube channel, uh, I got free tickets, uh, and I just went in there and I'm like checking around. Uh, we we got lunch there, so <laughs> my girlfriend was happy also uh, that we got free lunch uh, at the blockchain uh, conference. She is also um, frugal than uh, like me, so. It, it was fascinating to see all those, uh, like this, it was basically a completely shit coiner event. So, so uh, Robin. But but it was really, really cool, yeah. The, the lunch you had, it wasn't for free, you know, somebody paid for that. Somebody paid some tokens, you know, bought some tokens to some company that allocated that to a marketing department that basically sponsored your lunch, you know, that's how it happened. A shit coiner sponsored my lunch, isn't that good? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the, 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 the bigger question, what I wanted to lead up to that is, um, for me, I'll like, let's take it a step back. Like for me, uh, there are a lot of things that have a price tag or people are paying a price for something that I don't get. For example, art, like I, I don't get how people pay for something, especially modern art where like this, this picture is like, like I don't know. This could be my <laughs> some 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 five year old kid could make this, and they're paying five million dollars for that. Like, why are they doing that? Uh, or even the Bitcoin sign. We had this thing. Uh, this was also a big controversy. Is it actually worth that, or is it actually a meme? Like, why should not <laughs> get the Bitcoin for, instead of that? Um, like, like this is the first part of the question. The second part would be like, is there a place uh, where? altcoins or shit coins have a place like is is there value in those uh in in a, another sense not utility not is not money but could there be a place where like in 50 years that those tokens are still around and still have value i don't think so but uh, i don't know maybe you're, you're looking differently i think um you know we are at the point where um the consciousness around the all, all you know all the um all the mal mal doings of the fiat world, and you know the need to transition from the fiat standard to the Bitcoin standard. Um, that's growing, and that's going to be a process that will take time. And in the process, um, you know that that's what Giacomo Zucco said in, in Madeira that you know people say that you know there is there is crypto, and then Bitcoin is part of it. it and and he explained that actually it's the other way around. That there is Bitcoin, and then there's fiat, and crypto is part of fiat. Um, so I think there will be some kind of transition between, you know, both worlds and uh, some projects, some tokenization, maybe some real world assets. I don't know, like some of that will probably, you know, uh, stay there for a couple of years, maybe, maybe a decade. I don't know. Um, but eventually, you know, uh, it will be Bitcoin that will become a base layer. So everything will drop, you know, will, will come to Bitcoin. 
and you know maybe at some point there will be a way to to uh, to recreate those real world assets if that's still a thing on Bitcoin. Um, that that's my take. So I think you know uh, for for the short term period they're gonna stick around, um, and unfortunately, like only you know few few percent of those whatever fifteen thousand tokens that are out there or twenty thousand tokens that are out there. Uh, only a few percent will make it. Um, so, you know, majority of them will will, will go to zero uh, and people who put their money in there will lose. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the only, you know, flight to safety is, is Bitcoin. And that's, uh, that's amazing. By the way, did you see, I mean, it just came out like last night or the, the day or something like that. I did not check it out myself. I was just curious if, if you saw it. Um, the micro strategy orange thing. Orange, uh, yeah. It, 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 I just saw it a lot on my, my feed, but I did not have the time to. I saw it speak. yesterday and I started listening to, to it yesterday evening, but I, I had to go for my Aikido training. So I, I, um, I ended up not, not following up. Uh, yeah, but it's happening, man. I mean, like, you know, Sailor is, he, he walks the talk, right? So he was, you know, he, he was talking about Bitcoin and doing that and putting, uh, putting a lot of uh, money in there. But, uh, now he's actually putting his, you know his company to 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 build software that and solutions that will serve other you know other enterprises to uh to utilize the strengths of bitcoin so that's that's fantastic i need to watch the whole thing because i you know I, I just touched that but i love the fact that uh michael sailor is actually following through uh you know with like he, he really does what what he talks right so he's going into this and he's changing micro strategy to be a bitcoin development company yeah, and I think we will have so many more um, innovations and we are so early. And I think you said before that you thought you are too early, uh, too too late to Bitcoin, uh, as almost everybody thinks. I've also thought uh, in, in that way. And I thought that for three years that I'm too late and that Bitcoin is actually a scam. So I had this kind of thought in my head, which, which is contradictory. But uh, anyways like let's maybe talk to that like why aren't we too late like why is it still so early in bitcoin where do you see bitcoin going from an adoption standpoint like where do where do you think we are right now from a phase of money creation well i think you know uh it's maths right so you know we've got the the bitcoin formula the the, the you know the, the the formula that dictates how bitcoin supply is being released we know it's fixed supply. We know it's this is the ultimate finite scarcity in the digital form, in the purest form. So there is no other such thing known to man uh, that is so scarce. Um, I think now Bitcoin became, you know, with, after the halving became more more scarce than even than gold. So in terms of uh, you know appealing to Austrian economics uh, and gold bucks, this is now uh, more scarce than in gold. Um, and I think this fact alone, um, like Bitcoin doesn't have to do anything. You know, people are, over, and, and the world is complex enough and messed up enough for Bitcoin to succeed anyway. Like, you know, you, you turn on the news and you hear, okay, uh, the Federal Reserve is going to print another 60 billion uh, to, you know, to buy weapons and send them to, you know, one country. They're going to, you know, print another 25 billion uh, and send it to another country and uh, you know other con other 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 governments say yeah we're going to you know support them as well we're going to buy some more rockets and whatever and uh, and and print that money so you know this is not something like m me or, or you would probably want to spend your money on right um, and, and uh, by by doing so you know by by printing money and spending that on things that are not that humanity doesn't need those things you know we don't need to be at war we don't need to, we should be living in peace um so in that sense um the geopolitical system is kind of constructed in a way that will make the uh the bitcoin win uh, and i you know i make a lot of analogies uh to 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 different things um I mentioned Aikido before you know in Aikido you actually use the strength and the the power of your you know the energy of your of your opponent um, to to win. So like the harder and the stronger and the, the faster your opponent is, the harder they're gonna fall. Uh, and Bitcoin is like that. If you attack it, you know even more, it's gonna grow even more. It's been designed this way uh, to be super robust and to be unstoppable. So 
there will be attempts to bring it down. You know, we had national, like, country level attack from you know China banning Bitcoin mining, uh, and Bitcoin is doing just fine. You know, there's another attempt now coming from US to you know, effectively, you know, they're aiming going probably to to ban, um, well, try to ban self custody, but that's impossible. You cannot. How can you ban? You know, how can you forbid someone from remembering twelve words? It's just not not doable. So again, you know, um, I always say, like, whenever, you know, I talk to someone who is not convinced, I say, look, you, you don't have to, you know, Bitcoin is optional. Any part, it doesn't discriminate. So, you know, anybody, any person in the world can, you know, can own Bitcoin. Any um, company in the world can own Bitcoin. Any corporation can own Bitcoin. Any government can own Bitcoin. They, they don't have to, but others might. And like, if you want to be part of the game, of this game theory, you just get in. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing, how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self-custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in the middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague Conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. More and more people will re realize that they actually need Bitcoin uh, more than Bitcoin needs them. So <laughs> that's like uh, something exactly. that, that you have to, to figure out. And I think when when once you get down this orange billing route, this, this route to getting and educated on Bitcoin, you figure more and more out that uh, oh, uh, like uh, it doesn't matter what, what happens to Bitcoin. Like it doesn't matter uh, what what mining ban or what what states are doing to Bitcoin? Bitcoin just grows. Like we from 2013, uh, China tries to ban Bitcoin. Now we have a Hong Kong ETF. Uh, exactly. Uh, mining is still in the country, probably with like 10 percent or something like that. Uh, mm. So everything uh, is good for Bitcoin. I, I think the the main uh, example that I always bring up is the example of uh, the mining exodus of, of China from 2021, where they had like 70% of the minings and now they have like 10%, which uh, sounds in theory bad, but this what happened is actually the decentralization of mining because all of the sudden it helped again, right? It helped again. The hash rate yeah. was back at the all uh, at the previous high of like in a few weeks. It was fascinating. It went down <laughs> and it went up again. Like nobody yeah. cared. Uh, they just like put the 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 miners and plugged it in somewhere else, and it helped decentralizing the whole thing. And it was good in the end. And it's 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 fascinating to see. And then on the other side, we have a high decentralized fiat system that seems to get worse every year with higher taxes, higher inflation. And I saw a video today where she was like, she was a single mom and she was talking six minutes about why she's paying over 50% taxes and cannot even live. Like she's not like a high earner or something like that. She is paying so much taxes when you calculate all the taxes, not just your payroll tax in there. And then I was like, but she forgot to mention one tax, inflation. inflation then it's like 60, 70% tax on your earnings. Um, how long can this go good? Like how long do you see this this thing going and, and, and can it go forever? 
No, of course not. So you know, I'm 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 worried about Europe because Europe, you know, is this is the sort of um, aging population living in a in a you know in a wealthy like very well situated, very wealthy compared to the rest of the world, to the global south, for example. And uh, because of this uh, um, of this comfort and the privilege of living in this society, with having you know access to everything, uh, to, you know, consumerism that is basically over the board with anything, you know, you order something with a tap of your, of your phone, you get it delivered to your, your, your house tomorrow. Um, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's lovely. But at the same time, we got hooked on this and, um, we don't realize that there is something that is wrong with that. And what is wrong with that is the fact that we are consuming and we are, um, we're, we're, we're living in a society that more and more gets um, dependent and uh, and hooked to to those 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 things that will not last forever that are not sustainable. So you know, uh, for example, UK. Uh, I'm not sure about Austria, but I think you know, uh, generally most of most of Europe, we have like uh, social benefits. Uh, you know, for for anyone who's not working or not feeling well or whatever, um, and yeah, that helps you know to cover your expenses whatever but at the same time this is the money people get for free and you know scotland is a kind of country that um has a problem of those benefits in the sense that there are there are now families that through three generations have been living of benefits only so you know there are there are people who are 23 24 25 and who come to you know to special like agencies and say well you know I, I've, I've got anxiety. I can't work. You know, I, you know, I've got a depression. I, I, you know, what can I get from the government? How can government help me? And, you know, they get uh, sometimes 300 pounds, sometimes you know, 800 pounds. It, it really de depends. But um, this way of living is so deeply embedded in them that basically uh, you got a good chunk of society already hooked up and completely dependent on the state. So to introduce things like C CBDC, central bank digital currencies, onto them, that's a no-brainer. That, that's 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 super easy. The, for the government to do, you say, okay, you're gonna be getting, you're gonna get 10%, you know, more benefits. You just need to switch to this system, and we're going to control how you spend your money. So you can't. You know, you can't uh, spend it outside of your city. You can't spend it on travel. You just have to, you know, buy groceries and that's it. You know, that's easy doable, right? Uh, and I think the inflation and taxation will kind of keep on growing. Um, and then, unfortunately, this is going to be in you know, a case of following what the US does, because right now it seems like, uh, at least in, in UK, uh, the crypto regulations are or, or Bitcoin regulations or, you know, anything to 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 make that officially legal and recognized is kind of stopped. It's, you know, it's a taboo. People don't talk about it. It's, uh, it's this elephant in a room where everybody goes like, yeah, it goes up. It's going to go up forever. And you guys are printing money. So it's going to go up even more. So like, it's, it, you don't, you don't need to be a, you know, a rocket scientist to understand that. And at the same time, you know, there is all eyes on the United States Federal Reserve. What will the sex say? Um, and obviously, you know, we're going to have the elections in the U.S. So once the administration changes over, there's going to be, you know, a, a period. I think basically, we're, I think right now we're kind of all in a, in, a, in a frozen period where we are waiting for this changeover to happen, for them to be able to chill a little bit and to, um, to come up with some, you know, some, some reasonable regulation. And I don't know how, like, how will that go? Because uh, if you know, if there's appetite to uh, to keep the dollar alive by all means, um, well, you know, that's that's another sense, like reserve uh, global reserve currency that that that's you know over the peak right now, and it's declining, and more and more countries will step away from the dollar, and so they'll need to find another um, currency that is um, recognized and is tradable. So, you know, I don't think that um, UK or Austria or any other country would want to trade in um, Chinese yuan, you know, that I, I, don't, I don't believe this will ever happen, uh, even though China will, will dominate um, 
uh, likely, you know, will, will dominate over uh, the economy of the world. Like it already does technically. You know, if you look around your, your room, how many items in your room have the, 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 you know, the sign made in China? It's, you know, it, this is the mental exercise we have to go for. Like we are very dependent. Anything you touch and they're like Chinese are super persistent on that. They put the made in China sign everywhere they, you know, they can. So literally, you know, every like if I if I check the pen I'm holding, it's probably made in China. Um, and and um, yeah, the, these things will keep on happening um, uh, until you know US comes to a conclusion when they when they say okay, you know our national debt is is too high to maintain, um, and we need to we need to restore like back back the dollar with something more tangible. So you know if, if they will, will want to trade again on something that other countries will want to trade again, this will have to be a commodity that is desired, recognized. And uh, and liquid, and this will be Bitcoin. So I think you know the reserves that, um, or, or you know the, the the Bitcoin that the stack that was confiscated in the United States. I don't think they will sell it. I think you know they will work closely with the likes of BlackRock, Fidelity, and you know all the ETFs. Maybe they will somehow try to you know put their hand on that that stack as well. I don't know. I don't know how they could do it, but you know they got they got all the power to do so, right? Uh, and so they will use it to, you know, to 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 stay afloat, to stay alive. So uh, it's um, fa fa fascinating for me to see also, like uh, when we look at CBDCs, uh, like kind of an getting those fiat a little bit longer in because they have a little bit more control. But at the same time, if they have more control, they will manipulate more. They will mess up more. I think, <laughs> uh, and it, and it introduces a digital wallet which tells the whole world the government is saying something digital has value. And why does then Bitcoin has no value? And yeah. then everybody has a digital wallet and they're like, ah, okay, this thing uh, is losing purchasing power over time and this thing is gaining purchasing power. Like, wow. Like, I, I see a lot of arguments made for the CBDCs is kind of a Trojan horse for Bitcoin. Uh, and 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 uh, having uh, it introduced to Bitcoin, but in the end of the day, it's, it's it does not really matter. How is actually I follow a little bit of the CBDCs for the European Union? What's the euro doing? Uh, is there anything different because of the Brexit in the UK? Like, is there like, are there similar plans for CBDCs in the UK? Well, there's the Bitcoin, or the you know. <laughs> The digital pounds, as they call it, uh, that they want to introduce at some point. Um, and there, I heard that I think 2026 they plan to roll this out. Or maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure here. Um, you know, of course they will try. They they will keep on trying. They they you know, out of all the countries, UK is the you know this is the financial hub. It's always has been the financial one of the financial hubs in the world. Um, and uh, they've always managed and. And uh, you know, played the money game uh, to their advantage in in terms of you know, uh, cantillionary effect. I don't think there's any other country where this is more visible than in UK, where you have the elites, the elites of you know of the country and and the people working for the banks, taking crazy bonuses every year. You know, in the hundreds of millions of pounds. Um, you know, as as a bonus to their salary, like. Okay, well, wh wh where's that coming from? You know, wh why, why, why would people need to pay uh, those guys to, to, you know, to get rich, you know, to some CEO of a bank? I don't, I don't recognize any particular, you know, uh, value that these people are providing to my life. You know, uh, and, and uh, they're close to the power, they're close to the elites, they're close to the money printer, and they benefit from that. Um, so. Uh, in the same kind of mindset, they will try to be close to and and impose the CBDCs because for them this is the continuum. They this way they, they will be able to keep getting richer while the poor getting you know staying at bay, keeping them low down. Um, whereas Bitcoin kind of flips that over because you know uh, if you're if you're a Bitcoiner, you understand that okay you have to, you have to stay humble. And uh, I really like the stuff that Giacomo said in Madeira that you know. Bitcoin is not the tool that uh, will allow you to get rich quick, but it will allow you not to get poor slowly. Uh, so basically, you know, if you're if you're like whatever your income might be, this is the the biggest mis misconception. Like you know, if you're if you're working in McDonald's or if you're you know if you're working on, on the minimal salary, 
um, that allows you to survive, you know, from the fir- from the first until the end, and you know, end to end, from month to month. Um, and you're if you're able to uh, to squeeze, you know, twenty euros from that or twenty pounds from that, put that in Bitcoin and thank yourself that you did that, and kind of keep on doing that with determination and keep on, you know, trying to to increase that as you go, uh, because this is something that will not be that will not escape. If you've got 20 euros that you want to put, you know, in on your shelf or in your piggy bank, um, that's ridiculous because that that money is going to, you know, keep on dropping it in, in value from from month to month. Um, so I would, you know, encourage everybody to kind of start exploring that. And one one thing that I, you know, I, I always uh, find um, fascinating when I meet someone new to Bitcoin is that they think that oh, you know, there's so much to learn, they're overwhelmed. And yeah, there is a lot to learn, but I encourage everyone to start slowly, but start, get started and then start learning. So don't procrastinate on starting your, you know, stacking sats, just take it off. You know, you're like, worst thing that's going to, that's going to happen is you lose your seed phrase or you mess up something and you lose your 20 euros. It's very unlikely it will, it will happen to you, but this is literally the worst thing that could happen in the beginning. And the more you like, the more, uh, the earlier you start with stacking and investing, well, investing, putting your money in Bitcoin, your wealth in Bitcoin, the more motivated you become to actually absorb knowledge and to learn best practices and to develop your mindset around Bitcoin. So um, in, in terms of order, uh, start doing and learning, doing and learning, doing and learning. There's a repetition to it. You know, there's, there's a cycle to it. Uh, that's how I think about it. Uh, that's uh, really, really cool because once you get into the habit also of saving money and you get rewarded for the saving, this is the big part. Because usually if you save money, you don't get rewarded. You get punished for saving in the fiat world. Yeah. And when you all of a sudden get rewarded for saving, this <laughs> completely changes the game and your mindset also uh, in the head. I have one last question on the, on the, on the Brexit thing. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, Bitcoiners are usually not as like, not really focusing political uh, politicians uh, too much. Uh, I got really out of, like I was really into politics before Bitcoin and now I'm really out of a pol- politics and I try to- Very similar, keep, very similar story with me. That resonates. Okay, keep, keep, keep me distance from, from it. Uh, but uh, as just a Bitcoin, as someone that observes uh, Britain and, and probably also a little bit the, the, the European Union still, uh, do, are you happy with the Brexit? Uh, I, do you think uh, this this is a trend that will continue, or do you want to be back in the European Union? Well, you know, I'm, I'm Polish myself originally, so I grew up in Poland. Uh, my aspiration was to go west, right? To, like when I was when I was a kid, uh, we would listen to you know to 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 uh, uh, all the music coming from Great Britain and uh, you know everything coming from the west. So so this was the inspiration. So. In terms of uh, growing up in that part of, of of Europe, you always look to to the West to to be part of the Euro, like Europe, European Union. This was a dream. So like I can't imagine leaving European Union. You know, like I, I'm not happy with that. I'm I'm off. You know, that's ridiculous. And I think a lot of Brits right now regret that uh, UK has exited uh, uh, European Union. Some of them were hopeful that maybe this gives a little more freedom for UK to actually be more agile, more you know versatile, and adapt some um, some laws uh, or create some laws that would be preferential to, for example, Bitcoin. Um, but it didn't. Instead, it did the opposite. So it kind of went completely wrong direction. And uh, I'm pretty sure that within next decade, maybe two decades tops. There will be conversations uh, in the UK about Britain rejoining European Union if if they want to be already committed to to, to rejoin at much higher price, of course. And this, this will cost uh, the British economy much 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 more than than uh, what they what they were doing um, by leaving UK, leaving EU. Yeah, uh, it'll be really interesting. I think the European elections are also really close. I don't follow it too much, but uh, it will be. I will watch the results uh, afterwards. It will be interesting yeah. to see uh, if they talk about Bitcoin at all. And I know in America, there uh, was a debate where uh, uh, Trump was asked uh, about Bitcoin and, and the candidates were asked about Bitcoin. Uh, but uh, as I said, I don't watch politi- 
politics too much, and I think it's healthy for, for one. But it's, personally. it's interesting. It's it's interesting you bring this up because you know it's like you've got we've got you know the biggest democracy we we know right, United States, and like pretty much all the candidates for the presidential seat already, you know, Bitcoin is part of the agenda for the debate already. It's already on the agenda in 2024. So uh, fine, you know, we, we may get one of the old guys, Biden, Trump, whatever, I couldn't care less. Um, I mean, it's a shame that, you know, we've got such a big country that also was so inspirational to, you know, to, to many people like myself, probably yourself as well, you know, the American dream and all that, you know, and and, and uh, all the good things that came from US. Um, and, and today we're kind of still living in, in, you know, ruled by two guys from the old era, from, you know, from the long ago that should be, they should be you know, retiring and just enjoying themselves doing stuff. They don't understand technology. They don't understand what, you know, the guy in, in, in Nayib Bukele in El Salvador is doing. Um, and uh, they, you know, there is no way to attract any sort of, free spirits or, you know, human capital uh, to, to, to U.S. right now. Uh, they got super high, like very high taxes. Uh, their geopolitical stance is also very kind of shaky. You know, they're trying to, 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 to remain the hegemon of the world. Um, you know, the recent news showed that how massively influential um the Israeli minority or majority I should say probably is in the United States actually I, I checked it on Wikipedia um, uh, the other day and it seems that um from all the Jewish people in the world 50 percent live in United States uh so there's more people more Jewish people in the United States than in Israel I mean just you know just 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 a picture right and it's it's sad to see what's going on in the world man I mean like uh, I wish, you know, that Bitcoiners could come up with a solution how Bitcoin fixes that. It's probably too early for this, uh, but, you know, we'll see. You mentioned El Salvador. Is, is that the new American dream? Yeah, instead of American, new American dream, you've got the, the, the savior, right? That That's the translation in, uh, of El Salvador, uh, the one who saves. Um, and and I think you know it's phenomenal that what you know what uh, the country is doing in the, on, on many levels. But you know one example is the, the fact that part of the country's national reserve is held in Bitcoin, and the address of the wallet has been published. So in this sense, I think this is you know uh, like a historical event where you know a country says, okay, this is you know I, I've got more, but this is this is how much I got. Here's my proof. And uh, the consequences of that are that, you know, you can, like Knight Bukele can go to, to, uh, to Joe Biden and say, how much do you have in Fort Knox? I bet it's empty. Like, I, I don't think there's anything. I, I, think, I don't think you have as much as you say you have, right? Because, like, well, it's, it's, you know, it's a secret. What, what the hell, you know? Uh, this, is, this is not being transparent. And El Salvador set the precedent for the world for the countries and leaders to say, okay, you know, this is how we're going to 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 be honest with our people and honest with uh, people from around the world and attract them to come to welcome them in, in, in El Salvador, to uh, you know to come and start their families, their lives over there, um, because we want to be a transparent country. Uh, I, I love it, uh, and uh, I think El Salvador. I interviewed already like ten people or so from from there that are either moved back to El Salvador or moved there to El Salvador and came from another country or are just living there for, for a long time there and grew up there. And it's it's fascinating to see how everybody's kind of like, yes, this is happening. We are still like, El Salvador is still not like extremely developed and this every is flourishing. Like we are still not there yet with El Salvador, but the beginning is there. Like they went from one of the worst countries to be in <laughs> in just yeah. 2020 to be an aspirational, really cool country to be in for talented and skilled people that can uh, provide a lot of value. So that's 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 amazing. And I will follow that story for El Salvador very closely. I hope I can be there this year for, for at least a month or something like that to, to see it firsthand because till now I only have stories from that. I uh, would love to be there also. Uh, but let's come uh, for a moment back to walking because this is really interesting for me. 
And I'm a firm believer that walking does something with your brain. Uh, how, how do you think walking alters or enhances uh, your way of thinking? And did you have some, some personal experience with, with that where you're like, oh, when I walk, actually the best ideas come from that or something like that? Yeah, it's a great question. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a phenomenal um, revelation or epiphany, if you like that you know you can meet together and you know when you're going to a meetup let's say bitcoin meetup you know in a pub and you're sitting opposite someone in a you know by the table stationary position and you're having a conversation you know back and forth it's always me telling you something you telling me something and you know it's it, it's 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 a energy struggle uh, this is you know me imposing things Do you agree with that? Do you not agree with that? It's back and forth. Um, and no matter how good friends we might be, uh, there's going to be always a little bit of judgment, a little bit of ego, and a little bit of this, you know, back and forth in terms of who's right or who's wrong or this kind of thing. I mean, th that just happens. Whereas when you're walking ahead, when you're just, just walking, you're focusing on your next step. You're focusing and you're on, on the road ahead. You're focusing on the horizon, what you see. Your blood circulation is completely different. So your mind, your brain functions differently. You're being more open-minded. And this creates a perfect, judge, almost judgment-free environment for a conversation with someone walking next to you. So you, like, you absorb knowledge. You're more open to new ideas. You're, you know, there is no need for uh, small talk for, um, there's no need for a pause. It's perfectly fine to, you know, to walk together for a couple of minutes and not say anything. And then you just pop in and say, hey, you heard about this one. And, and you know, you keep on developing those, you know, those, those conversations. Um, and, you know, another great aspect is that, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're walking and talking in a group, it's very easy to mingle as well to change who you're working with and to like my per from my personal experience I learned most about bitcoin by not talking at all I was just listening to other people talk and this is the real the real you know uh, game changer where you're just you know somebody pops a question it's like oh that's an interesting one I haven't thought of that and you just follow the conversation you you may want to you know chip in and ask some additional questions but um it's it's really great format to um to learn um to learn about bitcoin and i think what's even more important is that uh, you know it it requires and again there's there's a lot of analogies to um to martial arts where you need to uh, get better with practice and practice needs to be regular you need to have the discipline to keep on doing keep on repeating these things there's um <clears throat> there's this japanese framework called uh, shuhari I'm not sure if you uh, heard of this, but it's basically a, a three-step journey to um, to become a master. Uh, and uh, what what it means is, in you know, in the first stage, in the stage called Shu, you kind of follow the rule. You follow what the the sensei sent by your you know your teacher tells you. You don't question why you do this the simple exercise over and over and over again. You just kind of keep on doing that. Uh, you follow the rule. Uh, then when you're ready, um, you can go to the next stage, which is Ha. And in, in Shu Ha, in Ha, you're able to, you're, you're allowed to break the rule. So you follow the rule and you just, you break the rule. You consciously do something different because you know the rule already. You know the rule, you know the basics, the foundations. So it's very easy for you to do something differently and then come back to how it should be done by the by you know the best practice um so uh, in 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 the host in the second stage you're able to you 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 break the rule and in the third stage you transcend to you know you're the master of foundations you've done a lot of rule breaking and you transcend and you become the rule so you're freestyling you go with the flow and you're confident because whenever you feel like oh i made a mistake You just go back to basics and you repeat and you repeat and you repeat. And for this repetition process, uh, you build a muscle memory that helps you uh, become a master in, you know, any martial arts, be it Aikido or Jiu-Jitsu, whatever it is. Uh, you, you become uh, 
you know, better, you become master. Um, and it's very similar in, in Bitcoin where you still have to kind of, you know, learn those things and discover new layers and consequences of, you know, why this is important. You know, example, I, you know, I, I, my background, uh, academic background is, you know, I got my master's um, from the Warsaw School of Economics. And um, when I got my master's, I finished the uni. I guarantee that, you know, three months after I graduated, there was like I, my level of knowledge about economics was non-existent. I, I know nothing about economics. Um, I started learning economics because of Bitcoin. And, you know, through this, this process and this kind of rabbit hole that got me in, I tend to connect the dots and understand, you know, the, the, like the logic of Austrian economics, uh, the games thing that was happening in geopolitics and the consequences of certain certain actions, um, and but then again that comes with time and and with some time spent on on you know proof of work basically. Amazing, and uh, I, I think walking. I, I love the how was it called Shuha and what was the third part? Shuhari. Shuhari. Uh, I love that so much, uh, and I al already. Um, saw that with podcasting uh, because you are my 109th guest uh, and I'm doing it every day. So with practice, I know I, I'm getting so much better in preparing for the mm -hmm. interview. I needed mm -hmm. from my first interview, I needed like two hours to research, mm -hmm. get the uh, questions and stuff like that. And now uh, I don't do like, I usually do like 30 to 40 minutes of preparation where I'm like watching videos, diving into websites, w whatever is there from, from the guest. Uh, but yeah. sometimes I think it was like a week or two ago, I did not have any time to prepare like any, because I overlooked the appointment. You become transcendent and you become the master. Exactly. Master and, and, and I was like uh, five minutes before I got like a notification to like get in the, in the meeting. Uh, from Google Calendar. And I was like, what meeting? And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's try it. Like, I, I want to be respectful of his time uh, and I don't want to postpone it like three minutes before. And I was just getting in there and trying to, to get this point across. Uh, and it was one of the best podcasts uh, for me because I already had so many preparations for so many other guests and they uh, recognized patterns and stuff like that. So uh, obviously it's better to prepare. Like, obviously I'm trying to always like, 30 to one, 30 minutes to one hour to prepare for the podcast. But I now saw because I broke the rule uh, and I saw that uh, it's even good with freestyling, as you said, I can do it. And this is, uh, I mean, it has uh, um, indirectly only something to do with Bitcoin, but I love having those, those, those discussions and those uh, interesting thoughts also about that. Um, do you do, uh, when you, when you walk, is there anything more to walking? Do you have any program or do like, is, is, is when you do those walks or there sometimes like guest speakers or like, have you any stations or like push ups uh, every 20 minutes or like, is there, any, do you have any so programs? We, we don't do push ups. Uh, you know, guests, we, sometimes we, we get, uh, someone who would be kind of, you know, joining us and maybe, uh, bringing something new to, to, uh, to the group, but we generally stay, you know, very kind of peer oriented. So there is no karaoke. There is no such thing as following the lead. There's no leader. Uh, and um, we, we have a, a one little ritual that we do. And that's, again, something I, I, I brought with me from, um, from from the year I spent in Japan. Uh, it's, it, you know, Japanese people love taking family photos. Like, you know, I, I used to study with my, 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 my team uh, back in Nagoya University. And wherever we went for an excursion or a trip, uh, uh, you know, there, there would always have to be documentation of, you know, of, of the family pictures, everybody standing together and we have a picture. So I thought like, okay, it would be pretty kind of cool to, to, to do a, a proof of walk picture. Uh, and uh, every time we go uh, for a walk, we take a proof of walk picture. Um, and, you know, we respect everybody's privacy. So, you know, you can uh, cover your face. You can, uh, sometimes people stand backwards at the picture, which looks a bit funny. Uh, but you know, we have a head count and I have a little, um, we have a little chart on the website, basically showing the numbers of people attendees every Saturday. Uh, and now we've got new chapters, like new people, new towns, uh, new cities, uh, joining. So we have walks in, uh, around 15 cities that are registered. They don't happen very like, you know, every, every Saturday as we, as we do it in Edinburgh. But uh, there's some numbers and we have some proof of walks uh, 
on you know on popping up on on Nostra and on uh, on on, on um, Twitter as well. So uh, the hashtag proof of work, you know, you can see a lot of if you see any people there, these are the people who are doing Bitcoin walk. Um, I love it. Saturday somewhere in the world. Uh, I love that. I, I'm thinking of starting my own uh, proof of work uh, group in Austria. Let's see. Is there is there in Austria? Do you know of a uh, group in Austria? Sorry. Is, do do you know of a proof of work group in Austria already? Uh, I don't know. So uh, yeah, I think you can you can you can start one. I'm, I'm sure there will be you know a lot of people who are doing that. Actually, I have to I have to give credit to to um, I think he's Austrian actually. Uh, is is Gigi Austrian or is he uh, German? German? He is from Germany. German. Okay. Yeah. So, but basically, um, I know that he's he's like he started a website called uh, plebwalks.com, mm. uh, and I you know he's he's doing a, a lot of things. Um, so I kind of uh, you know I, I started Bitcoin work not knowing about the thing. So then I started kind of you know getting up to speed and understanding what he was trying to do. And I think uh, well at some point you know, I I spoke to him on on, on Nostra and he suggested that maybe I'd, I'd be interested in taking over the maintenance of of this plebworks uh, page. Uh, so I still don't know how exactly you know best best way to, to to take it over. I think from from marketing perspective, maybe centralization here is <laughs> is going to be you know beneficial. Um, so may, maybe we'll do something. I, I I still haven't figured that out. Um, but you know we'll see. Like right now, you know we've got Bitcoin Walk uh, as a very kind of open, you know, telling the story. Um, and, and also, you know, the domain BitcoinWalk.org, it's very similar to BitcoinTalk.org. One of the first forums where Satoshi was, you know, discussing Bitcoin. So you, when you walk the talk, you're kind of, you know, it's just one letter difference in the domain, and it translates the early cyberpunks to to what we do today, which is also a nice tribute. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's very easy to set up your your uh, your chapter of Bitcoin Walk wherever you are. Um, if you come to BitcoinWalk.org, there is a you know a link over there. Uh, we can help you set up you know your page uh, for your walk where you define you know, the location, the time, and whatever you want to say on the page really, uh, and and then just let it you know share it with your with your crowds uh, if people want to come. Brilliant, you know, that that that's awesome. We're doing another cool thing that. Um, that I think uh, people will like uh, is it, basically you know, whenever we uh, we take a family photo, like we want to make sure that we're we're all like we all we got the highest head count we can get, so we get everybody who comes to the Bitcoin walk. So we always ask like if there's somebody passing by, we ask them to take the picture, uh, and uh, like instead of say cheese or say smile, we say everybody say Satoshi. Uh, so we're kind of you know, shouting that out loud. Uh, which is a you know a nice uh, nice tradition now, and uh, we also like, like recently we made a flag, uh, the first version of a flag, which is just basically Bitcoin Walk. You know, every sat uh, walk the talk with Bitcoin Walk, uh, and I'm making a new uh, a new flag, new edition, you know, of, of the flag, the iteration of the flag, I should say, which will basically say, "Don't own zero Bitcoin." So anybody who will will ask to take a picture will see, hey, don't own zero Bitcoin. Like, hmm, is that like, <laughs> basically a little a little bit of prank uh, on the person? I mean, not a prank, but uh, a message to the person taking it. Maybe it will you know anchor something in their in their head as well to 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 study Bitcoin. And this is where like when you get out and you walk and you talk with Bitcoiners, uh, then you might meet new people. Like there might be someone listening. Absolutely. Uh, and this is something really, really great because we have to get out and we have to be present, um, not only online. I think online, uh, we're getting better and better. Still, we need more people sharing the thoughts, I, but we also have to be offline in wherever the people I, are. So I've got, I've got uh, a thesis uh, or, or, you know, um, a, an opinion that I think might prove right in, in the next, you know, months and years. Um, basically, you know, with the amount of, FUD and noise coming from, you know, social media, mainstream propaganda. Um, now we've got AI fakes. So it's really hard for someone who's new into Bitcoin to kind of digest and filter out what is real, what is not. Um, and uh, there is more and more people who basically want to talk to some real person in real life to make sure that they're not getting, you know, scammed because there might be a situation where somebody, I don't know, inherits, you know, a bunch of money from, you know, grandparents, whatever, 
and they want to put it in something and they, they somebody tells them about Bitcoin and they don't know anything about that. So they want to validate, they want to learn and validate and maybe ask some questions. Um, so, you know, Bitcoin Walk is a great format and place to, to, to come by and ask those questions. You know, we will never, we will never, like, we have a little manifest on the website um, and that basically says, you know, uh, all, all the kind of best practices and we will never help you set up your wallet for you. You know, that's not what we're going to do. Uh, but, you, you know, we'll point you in the right direction. We'll tell you, you know, maybe try this wallet or, you know, use a hardware wallet. Well, we can talk about, you know, multisig. We can talk about whatever you like. You like. But still bearing in mind that, you know, privacy and, and uh, security is, is, is on top of the list. Uh, very cool. It's uh, Bitcoin groups are always great and they always keep like privacy and and uh, protecting the individual um in mind and this is, is great and uh, before we get to our end routine um do you have some story of one bitcoin walk or like a an and talk that you had on a, a bitcoin walk that you can share was like a really cool uh, story or some something that stand out from those uh hundreds of walks <laughs> there is there there is a lot uh but um uh... Um, I think one that okay, and I'll tell you the reason. I got I got two or three that that are at the top of my 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 head right now. But uh, the last one was actually something from from a friend uh, uh, who's like a regular Bitcoin walker here in, uh, here in Edinburgh, and he said like, okay, guys, you know, we're over the halving. I have to say, you know, this epoch, this bear market was much easier because of Bitcoin walk because there are other people I could kind of on a regular basis go through this and you know have those conversation, and then we kind of established that. You know, Bitcoin Walk is not only the most secure computer network out there, but it's also the strongest and the best support network in terms of people you can surround yourself with and people who will push you and, and pull you wherever necessary. So uh, in this sense, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have developed all the friendships with all the people I met. Um, and uh, I encourage everybody to try it out. You know, I think it's it's great for meeting people. It's great for you know, being out there, being away from the screen, away from the blue light, in the sunlight, ideally, you know, sometimes in Scotland, we, we're, we're not always that lucky. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a great thing that you can do wherever you are. And I'm hoping that, you know, one day Bitcoin Walk will, uh, will be a ritual that people will exercise, you know, like with religion. I don't want to be making crazy comparisons here, but, you know, uh, church has, is using, has been using very kind of effective methodologies to keep their crowd in, right? To enforce the beliefs, to uh, to build on top of that. And they have Sunday masses they bring to get people together. So we don't have Sunday masses. Uh, instead, every Sat, every Saturday, uh, or every thousand blocks, uh, because, you know, if you look into it, if difficulty adjustment is, you know, 2016 blocks, and that's every two weeks, then half of it is like 1,008, right? And I'm your 1,009 guest as well. <laughs> so basically, you know, those those that that that's eight, nine, ten blocks. Uh, this is the time we spend on the walk. So I say every thousand blocks we go for a walk. Every Saturday we go for a walk. History makes a perfect circle. One hundred ninth guest, not thousand, but uh, almost, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we having the end. Uh, I think uh, I, I will be. When will I be at the thousand? I will do three hundred. Uh, yeah, end of next year, maybe beginning of uh, uh, next to next year. Let's let's see how how fast I'm there. I've tried to do it every day, uh, but uh, you're totally right. Like it's really cool to have those things, and uh, Bitcoiners are also really good in in having a great community. There are so many great meetups, uh, as you say, walks, uh, uh, conferences. I, I love meeting just people like just Bitcoiners in real life. It's it's really really cool. Uh, sorry, do you have something wrong? I just wanted to chip in because, you know, um, we came up that on, on our 100th walk that, uh, you know, we, we need to do something. We need to celebrate it somehow. So we, we came up with uh, a really, really hard challenge, like super hard challenge. We call it 21 Sats Challenge. Uh, and basically that's 21 Saturdays. So go for a walk 20, 21 times in a year. Um, keep on doing that, you know, and uh, like... It, you know, if you're doing that first time and you're in a location with people who haven't done Bitcoin work and you're just meeting for the first time, um, sometimes it might be somewhat awkward if you don't have someone who will, you know, lead the conversations and start a conversation. And, and I always say, like, you know, like, 
keep it private. You don't have to be you know, revealing your information about yourself. Uh, you can you can stay anonymous. You can you, know, you don't have to like I, if I ask you know when when did you get into Bitcoin or you know you can say well I wish I got earlier you know <laughs> uh, or um, like we don't we don't discuss those we don't ask those questions. But um, the twenty one Sats, it, you know the twenty one Saturdays it's it, it is a really really hard challenge to go for a walk every every Saturday for 21, 21 weeks. Um, but it's super rewarding in the sense that, uh, like with DCAing, like, you know, dollars cross averaging, when you, when you keep on doing that, no matter, you know, if you, if you, if you buy on the top or the bottom, you, you will, you will average out and you'll be fine. You, you, you actually, uh, make profits, uh, and you know, your, your stack will be like, you won't be buying too high, for example, you know, um, and it's similar to Bitcoin walk and the, the ritual that you kind of keep on repeating, you build up your um your ability to connect with bitcoiners um you know you start like you can always go back to the magnificent questions like how does finite scarcity change humanity how does self custody change humanity like change the world that we know today um you know bitcoin fixes the world bitcoin you know fix the money fix the world and and bitcoin does that so it's very easy to kind of again following the the shuhari rule to go back to the basics, and if you think about the basics such as self custody and uh, and finite scarcity, then from here you can take it anywhere. You can take it to, into you know economics, money talk, you know politics, geopolitics, game theory, philosophy, energy, environment. The list goes on and on. So it's it's a fantastic way to to meet people and to learn from each other. Uh, I, I fully and wholeheartedly agree with that. It's really cool. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we have an end routine in the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest. Uh, and uh, your question from the previous guest is, uh, would you rather question, would you rather nobody hold his own keys to Bitcoin, but Bitcoin will be the global reserve currency, or Bitcoin is never reaching the status of a global reserve currency, but everybody is able to hold their own keys? Freedom, man. Freedom. Like this is the question here is around: Do you prefer communism or do you prefer capitalism? Mm. Uh, I prefer capitalism. I prefer to be the master of my destiny, and so yeah, definitely the latter. Uh, really, really cool. Yeah, perfect. I think this is where my last guest also wanted to go. <laughs> right. Uh, perfect. Then uh, thank you for being on, Jacob. Uh, if if people have questions for you, I want to ask you questions, or I want to start something uh, themselves, and they have questions, uh, can how? How can they reach out to you? Where can they reach you the best way? Um, the easiest ways, way to, to get in touch is just go to bitcoinwalk.org website where you can find the links to our Telegram, Noster, and um, and Twitter. Um, so, you know, we are, we've got a nice community that's pretty active there. Um, and yeah, you know, people are always welcome. You know, ideally, uh, this is completely non-for-profit initiative. You know, we're just doing that as a hobby. Um, so... We want to keep this growing. We want to have fun. Surround ourselves with Bitcoiners, and uh, I'm, I can guarantee that you know if you're if you're somewhere and you're you know you dig it, you understand, or you want to learn more, this would be a great platform for you to to do it. Ah, uh, really cool. Thank you for taking the time, Jacob. My pleasure. Thanks, Robin. <laughs>